。啊，各位同事，早晨，我哋就。Members, good morning. We formed the Quorum May I call meeting to order. Since the last meeting, we've received quite a few information papers, and also among them are submissions from members and responses from the administration. Please refer to the agenda for the details. Date of our next meeting is the 14th, 11th of April. The administration has got two suggestions for us as far as the agenda is concerned. Uh, first, road improvement works in West Kowloon Reclamation Development Phase 1, and second, fair increase application from KMB. Right, members, do you have any comments on the two items? I, uh, I, I support the agenda for our April meeting, but can we have another discussion uh, on uh, ferry services for our outlying uh, service, uh, outlying islands? Because uh, the government has already paid $190 million to subsidize the services, and yet they are still asking for fare increases. Mr. Lee Chuck Yan, can we discuss uh, the uh, rest periods? Of bus drivers and uh, the safety of franchised buses, we've received complaints that members may recall that a year or so ago we had a discussion on this topic, and the um, bus companies gave us um, some undertaking. Uh, um, KMB promised to extend the uh, rest periods of bus drivers from four thirty to forty five or even one hour. So, for the sake of um, Bus driver's health. I think we should discuss this as soon as possible. All right, for the next meeting, we can uh, put in one more item because we may not need too much time for the road improvement improvement works in W K reclamation development. And among the nine letters we received since the last meeting, there's mention. Of uh, ferry services for Changchao, and Mr. Tang Kapu also um, raised the point about fare increases of ferry services. So we will include uh, fare services and adjustment, fare adjustment of outlying islands, and uh, safety of buses and uh, rest periods of uh, drivers. We leave it to uh, yet another meeting, Mr. Albert Chen. Now we'll talk about uh, rest uh, for bus drivers and uh, safety. Can we have an, a paper on whether uh, there are uh, places for bus drivers to take uh, breaks and uh, any uh, washroom facilities at bus stops or terminus? Okay, yes, we'll ask for that in the paper. Let's go into agenda item number three, public lighting in Hong Kong. Uh, the next meeting is scheduled for 10.45 on the 11th of April. Joining us for this meeting, we have Mr. Yao Xing Mu, Under Secretary for Transport and Housing. Ms. Judy Cheung, PAS for Transport and Housing. Mrs. Joanna Kwok, Deputy Director of Highways. Mr. Albert Liu, Assistant Director from the same department, and also Mr. M. Kwok Kwan, Chief Engineer from the Highways. Uh, whenever you are ready, Mr. Yao. Thank you. Chairman. We'd like to brief members on the public lighting system in Hong Kong, including the design standards, operation, maintenance, beautification, and energy saving measures. The um, Highways Department is responsible for the design standards, operation, and maintenance, as well as the majority of design and construction of the public lighting system in Hong Kong. The Highways Department will uh, give consideration to a number of parameters, including uh, the functions, uh, the uh, uh, traffic flow uh, of uh, the um, 
environment concerns and also the ambient lighting and uh, there are also energy saving considerations and uh, cost effectiveness to meet the demand of society, the highways department will continue to uh, improve the system, enhance our standards of maintenance and repair, and I will continue to provide li reliable, uh, safe, and uh, comfortable and environmental friendly public lighting system to the community. The highways department will give a PowerPoint presentation. Thank you. Mrs. Kwok, are you going to do that? Or Mr. Liu? Thank you, Chairman. I'd like to brief members on uh, the public lighting system in Hong Kong, and I'm going to uh, cover uh, stand design standards operation, maintenance, purification, and energy saving measures. I will talk about uh, public lighting system under the responsibility of the highways department, and uh, we have uh, 226. 1,200 likes, uh, 141,400 of them are uh, on our carriageway, um, our footpaths and uh, cycle tracks with 17,000 odd uh, likes uh, for our underpass. And we've also got 1,400 uh, high mass lighting, 5,800 likes at public transport interchanges. They are high bay lighting. There are about 44,700 um, lighting for foot bridging and subway lighting, foot bridges. There are also uh, 17,000 lights for green tree signs and also a uh, roadside directional sign. And we have over 10,000 uh, traffic bollards where illumination is also required. Our design standard is based on the public lighting design manual published by the highways department, which has uh, made reference to the BSEN 13201-2330 road lighting performance requirements. We take into account uh, the um, a level or the grade or the classification of the road concern, and that's about the traffic, traffic volume, traffic segregation, and the tra pedestrian volume and ambient brightness. We also uh, take into account the following three factors, and that is energy saving, reduction of light pollution, and cost effectiveness. We have photo electric controllers are installed in roadside public lighting control cubicles to control road lighting uh, when uh, the ambient brightness falls to 55 lux um, the uh, lighting will be automatically switched on and switched off when it rises to 83 lux and usually road lighting will operate from around 8 minutes after sunset to around 15 minutes before sunrise that is about 11 hours for subway lighting and underpass lighting because uh, there is no natural illumination, uh, lighting operates around the clock. So this is uh, the roadside lighting control cubicles. Next is um, the um, power supply by uh, the power companies. This glass panel is uh, where we have the photoelectric controllers. Uh, sometimes it may be uh, installed at a different position depending on the uh, situation, road size situation. We have two types of maintenance. Uh, first, uh, for preventive measures. Every seven day we um, carry out daytime patrols to see whether there is any um, problem with our facilities. And uh, we clean the lighting once every half year and we change the light bulbs every two to three years. And then we will also carry out very careful calibration of our PES. Every four years, we will test our electrical installations. When necessary, the rustic uh, lampposts and aged cables will be replaced. And every four years, we will paint uh, protective uh, paints on uh, lampposts. We also have corrective maintenance. Uh, at, at night time, we will see whether uh, any um, Lighting facilities are out. When necessary, we'll carry out maintenance. We'll require our contractor to arrive on site within two hours upon receipt of an urgent fault call and to complete a minor adjustment or a maintenance within three hours. And for uh, more complicated repairs, they have to be done within 12 hours. 
for not so urgent uh, incidents, we expect um, maintenance to be completed within 24 hours. By urgent faults, we refer to incidents involving safety issues, including fire, falling of lampposts, electricity leakage, and portable lamp failures. We have a standard design lanterns to beautify our environment. We have uh, 6,800 odd um, very uh, special um, um, uh, uh, lanterns. They are in important tourist spots such as Causeway Bay or characteristic roads such as um, uh, Riverside of uh, Sha Tin and also um, in places uh, like Chong Kwan Old Sports Ground. For energy saving, we have always set a lot of store by energy saving. We are using a high efficiency uh, lighting facilities like clouds. <coughs> we try out um, new uh, road lighting products such as a ceramic discharge metal uh, halide and um, and also a light emitting diode LED. And we also have uh, electronic uh, bolas. On the left-hand side, we have uh, the very old type of lights, and uh, the standard is IP54, and uh, the uh, uh, case can be easily um, gone rustic. And most of the time, uh, lamp, lamp is uh, rather uh, that the efficiency is not high. We have uh, gone for IP66. Um, specifications and uh, the uh, lamp itself is very resistant to humidity and rust and uh, most of the lamp is inside the casing and we have also got a case uh, to improve the reflective angle and to improve the projection angle so we can use uh, light bulbs of a lower wattage to achieve the same level of illumination for instance, oh, in the past we might have to use 250 uh, watts of light bulb. Now we can uh, use one uh, of 150 watt to achieve the same level of illumination. We've also got um, very efficient light bulbs. Uh, the first one is already phased out. <coughs> it's um, uh, uh, over form of high pressure sodium lamps. And it's a very efficient. Uh, type of lamp. We are also experimenting with a new type of ceramic discharge metal halide lamps. And these bulbs are, are small, getting smaller and smaller and more efficient. And they can <coughs> uh, uh, we can use lower lamps of lower voltage to achieve the same uh, lighting effects and, and conserve energy at the same time. Next, I'd like to talk about the ceramic discharge metal halide lamps. In some of our auxiliary rows, we've really used 2,500 such lamps. They discharge white light with a wider spectrum and, and hence provide better color rendering and there is less distortion. So we can use <coughs> a lower voltage to achieve the same lighting effect and therefore we can use uh, uh, lamps with a uh, lower voltage and therefore uh, save energy by about 30%. These are some of the lamps that we've installed in some back lanes. Next, the LED lights. Uh, to the left is a low voltage uh, uh, LED light. To the right is a, a medium level uh, LED lights. For each, in front of each LED, there is actually a small mirror to <coughs> adjust the reflection angle. In some of the uh, spur roads and in certain districts, we've already installed 110 LED, low voltage LED lights uh, on a pilot basis, and they are more or less uh, equivalent in function with the uh, high pressure sodium lamps. But we do not have LED lights providing high voltage. Since they uh, discharge white light with a better, uh, 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 wider spectrum, so we're able to conserve energy by 30%. Biggest problem with LED lamps is that they're very expensive compared with the high pressure sodium lamps. They are 10 times more expensive, and the energy that could be saved cannot compensate for the higher cost. So it's not very cost effective, and at the moment we're not using these LED lamps on, on an extensive basis. But we'll closely monitor the development of this technology. So, so much so far for our, so this is a, 
what we've installed in Saikok Road in Kowloon. Previously, you used the high-pressure sodium lamps. We've now replaced, replaced it with LED lights. In Castle, uh, in Clearwater Bay Road, we've also experimented well with installation of the LED lights. You see that the LED lights actually, uh, uh, you know, is, more, is, is whiter. Next, the electric uh, ballast, ballast. The traditional uh, ballast would <coughs> generate heat, and 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 some of the energy would be lost. Uh, the for electric uh, uh, ballast, uh, the disadvantage is it could be damaged by uh, lightning, and therefore we need to install them on a selective basis. Uh, uh, another benefit is that we can adjust the <coughs> uh, level illumination. And if the uh, lighting is below standard, we can adjust the, 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 the brightness level. And by making such adjustments, we can save energy by about 20%. So much for, for our uh, uh, briefing. We'll continue to enhance the uh, efficiency of our lighting, public lighting systems and, uh, and conserve energy. Any supplement from the Under Secretary? No? We have Mr. Wong Kwok Heng, Tang Kapiu, Albert Chen, Bun Xiu Ping, and Mr. Chuck Yan, and Mr. Chung Shu Khan would like to speak. So we say four minutes each. Mr. Wong Kok Heng. Thank you. I have two questions for the administration. First of all, uh, regarding the uh, use of solar energy, I think your briefing has not touched on this part. So does the government have any plan to introduce uh, lighting uh, uh, by solar energy in order to save energy? In other countries and even in the mainland, many such uh, experiments are ongoing. A few years ago, I remember, we visited the, uh, <coughs> the World Expo in Shanghai. I think the chairman will remember this. At the uh, uh, Expo uh, World Expo uh, uh, Pavilion, uh, they are already using solar lights, and we were brief, uh, electrical members who uh, were, were brief uh, uh, on that. So I think our public lighting system now has not. I think in your brief, in your paper and in your briefing, you've not uh, mentioned the introduction of solar lamps. So will the uh, Under Secretary actively consider, uh, you know, using uh, such uh, solar, energy solar energy lamps on, on a pilot basis? Secondly, at many public transport interchanges, and actually I have received uh, uh, from members of the public and even the bus co franchise public companies that the lightings uh, at those locations are very dim. For example, at the public transport interchange at Lam Tin, the lighting is very, very dim. And this does not only, uh, uh, I think for bus drivers, the, pass, the, the pedestrians uh, uh, who walk by, uh, I think uh, a lot of inconvenience uh, is caused to them. So I'd like the administration to follow up on this. The bus company has already indicated to me and they cited the example of the Lam Teen public transport interchange where the lighting level is too low. Please follow up on that. So two questions. Under Secretary, I'll invite the uh, Transport Department to respond to those two questions. In fact, the, transport, the, the Highways Department has considered the adoption of solar energy lamps, but then there are also certain constraints uh, <coughs> In doing so, perhaps I'll invite the uh, Highways Department to explain further. Mrs. Kwok, let me answer the first question. Uh, as of now, uh, the solar energy technology in Hong Kong has not been uh, 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 adopted in our uh, public lighting system. This is because the function and the reliability of the solar energy lights are very much uh, dependent on the amount of sunlight we get. Uh, considering the weather of Hong Kong, especially in winter, in spring, and during rainy seasons, where we do not have sufficient sunlight, the energy that could be conserved will be drastically reduced. Furthermore, uh, 
and there's not much space for us to <coughs> install the photovoltaic vot uh, panels. Therefore, the amount of solar energy that could be conserved would not be sufficient uh, to uh, <coughs> to provide uh, uh, to, to support the uh, the lighting of the for for, for, for throughout the evening. Uh, furthermore, we have many high-rise buildings, and the shadows cast would obstruct the sunlight, uh, you know, <coughs> uh, shining directly onto the photovoltaic. Panels. We therefore do not have uh, any plans to conduct such a, an experiment yet. Perhaps you could consider trying this out in the rural areas, and and also you can lay cables in the more remote areas. Perhaps you can consider conducting an experiment uh, on that basis. Regarding the public transport industry, yes, I don't think you need to answer the question. You already received the the uh, the, the complaint. Perhaps you can look into that further. Uh, Chairman, will I get a second round? Well, we'll see after all the other members have spoken. Mr. Tenkapio. Mr. Wong. Uh, uh, further to Mr. Wong's suggestion, I'd like to also suggest that we should have different lighting levels in different on, on different locations. Some people come, have complained that if you go to the new towns and in the residential areas and also uh, along jogging tracks uh, 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 near the river riverside, it's too bright. For example, the waterfront in Tai Taipo and and Shanghai uh, and Sha Tin. Uh, even the, the 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 height of the lamb would affect the the illumination level. You may have uh, you may you may uh, have a higher uh, level of illumination for security reasons, but then you would need to uh, uh, use up more energy. So I think you, you should. So that I think the the illumination level. Uh, in different districts should be different. So would you look into that? Secondly, another uh, there's another interesting uh, request uh, that is in some places where the environment is rather pleasant. For example, in Shatin and Taipo, people have told me that in the 1980s, in the 80s and 90s, people could see the dragonflies. You don't need to go to rural areas. If you live <coughs> along the Lamchun River in Taipo, there are many public housing estates, and the residents could still see the dragonflies. But ev ever since the public, the lighting system become brighter and brighter, the dragonflies have, have gone. So I don't know whether uh, you would, uh, uh, when you install public lighting systems in the residential areas, you will bear this in mind. Secondly, I like to put this to the under secretary. This may not have to do with the highways department, perhaps the the Marine Department. Uh, residents in Potoy Island uh, do not have any power supply. The government has provided them with two diesel generators, and the residents have to buy diesel from Aberdeen, and 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 and, and whereas in the piers uh, and the vicinity of the pier, uh, the area is illuminated by lights, uh, you know, powered by the diesel generators. So, would you consider adopting Mr. Wong Kok Hing's suggestion? For example, installing uh, lamps, which are lighting system, which are fueled by uh, 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 green energy. Well, there is actually a design ma uh, manual which uh, prescribes the uh, uh, the different lighting levels depending on the traffic and pedestrian. Uh, levels. Uh, the the second question is about Potoy Island. Normally, in the rural areas, the Home Affairs Department has plans to install public lighting system. I understand that the, the situation in Potoy Island is rather unique, so perhaps I will uh, pass on this particular uh, you know inquiry to the to the department's concern for follow up. I think uh, the design of our uh, public lighting system follows uh, international standard. We focus on the design focuses on safety. That is, we need to provide sufficient uh, lighting level for the road users. Uh, it will depend on the function of the road, the traffic uh, volume, and the neighboring environment. It would also depend 
or the alignment of the road itself. As for the pavement, we will also need to consider the function of the pavement. Regarding the uh, carriageway, the lights uh, should enable the drivers to see uh, obstacles ahead when they are driving. As for the pavements, we need to ensure that the pedestrians will be able to uh, see clearly in front of them. Uh, They would need to be able to see clearly what is in the front of them. Salva Chen. Thank you. Overall speaking, I think the public lighting system on our roads and pavements and even in the rural areas are already, uh, <coughs> you know, <coughs> uh, uh, more extensive and and uh, and uh, bright enough and uh, very often I, th I i think that the 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 lighting level tends to be brighter rather than than dim and very often the members of the public are worried about the question of security and safety when the lighting level is low too low perhaps that is doesn't may not tell it with reality it's more uh, you know a psychological uh, you know effect uh, is uh, you know perception but if the lighting level is too bright it would uh, spoil the environment and and also uh, increase the energy cost I think we've gone to many neighboring cities. And we've, if you go to different parts of Hong Kong, uh, you'll find that especially for the <coughs> uh, pedestrian footbridges, the lighting level is too bright. I've mentioned the uh, footbridge a lot in Tong Chong, spanning uh, between uh, Tong, Tong Chong and the petrol station. I think the lighting is the, the light, lamps are so bright as if it were daylight in the evening, and you get a you know a lamp once uh, <coughs> for a distance uh, with a distance of uh, one lamp every for each one and a half feet, and also lighting the light the design of the lighting system in the rural areas have told no regard for the, the the needs of the residents. I think for the rural areas, you should install shorter lamps because the uh, <coughs> the uh, uh, the uh, village houses only have three stories, and sometimes the lamps are just you know six feet away from people's uh, 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 houses, and people have to draw the curtains before they can sleep. You have no regard for the objective environment at all. So you just adopt standard planning. Some. Residents are uh, illegally cut off the power supply uh, because uh, the light is just outside uh, his window, and uh, he um, feels uh, that it's torture, and uh, his complaints uh, have not been heeded by the government. So uh, the lighting uh, should give regard to the living environment. So you very bureau uh, bureaucratically, you just uh, set the standards. Thirty-four years ago, when I was a university student, there was a comprehensive study on lighting. It was decided that uh, lights on some uh, subways would only be switched on on alternate evenings, and for those uh, that are less uh, frequented, um, the uh, lights uh, would uh, only be on when there are pedestrians. That was more than 30 years ago, and what we do now have no regard for the um, objective uh, needs of uh, the community. And please uh, tell me whether you're going to improve uh, the lighting of the footbridge from Yetong Estate to uh, the petrol station. First, yes, we are very concerned about uh, light nuisance and whether uh, there is excessive lighting. Our usually uh, we don't receive too many complaints uh, regarding uh, lighting, street lighting. There were only ten uh, such complaints last year. Most complaints were about uh, lighting from uh, signboards and uh, other fluorescent lights. However, Mr. Chen has a point, and the highways department has plans to uh, replace uh, wall lighting with other devices. So as to uh, reduce lights uh, reflected, light reflected from these places. But what about rural areas? 
Well, are you going to conduct a full review and give us a report in due course? Because it's not the first time I've mentioned this issue. But of course, uh, some uh, issues are um, um, under the purview of uh, the Home Affairs Bureau. Yes, Mr. Chen is correct. Uh, the Home Affairs Bureau is responsible for rural lighting, but we will coordinate with the Bureau to see how it can be improved. If uh, street lighting or road lighting is too excessive affecting uh, households, uh, we can uh, replace it with uh, some refractive uh, lamps or lampshades to um, reduce the nuisance. I will ask the Harvest Department to uh, follow up on these specific issues. Uh, the lighting in Yatonga State footbridge, for instance. Mr. Chuang Kwok Chu, or rather, uh, Mr. Pan Xiaoping. In some tourist areas, uh, the uh, Highways Department, ha Department has issued uh, 600 odd decorative lamps in these places. I'd like to know whether uh, you will consider cost effectiveness. And street fa light failures, lamp failures. Uh, you ask contractors uh, to inspect and uh, maintain and repair. Uh, can you give us information on uh, the incidence of uh, lamp failures? Mrs. Kwok, any information on that, please? Regarding our features, uh, street lights. Well, when there are uh, street scape enhancement works or special requests, we do install decorative lights. In the past three years, we've installed 700 odd such lights, and uh, we're planning to do so in Chunwan and Tung Chong. Uh, special decorative lights. Uh, lamp failures. Yes. Uh, as we said in the PowerPoint presentation, we inspect our road lighting. Uh, we uh, rely, we uh, require a 99.5 percent as far as uh, the um, reliability is concerned. So, is the work outsourced? Outsourced. But we also have colleagues to inspect the places to ensure that uh, whether uh, the uh, street lighting is that effective. Um, uh, the performance uh, requirement is 99.5%. The international standard is just 98%. Have you got complaints? Now, for instance, you may only inspect a certain place uh, once a week, and yet uh, the lamp has uh, gone out. Uh, is there any uh, ha channel for them to complain? Yes, we do our own inspection, and so does the contractor. And when we have a complaint, as uh, we said, for a non-urgent call, the issue has to be fixed within 48, no, 24 hours. Perhaps you should uh, put the uh, complaint hotline number on the lamp posts. Do you have that? Well, they need only to call one eight two three the government hotline. Okay. Well, we should let the public know so that they know how uh, they can uh, handle such a scenario. Mr. Lee Chai Yen. Well. Uh, 2010 and 2013, that is the last uh, photograph. There is a great increase in the number of light, public lighting. Uh, why is it that in 2013, uh, the rise uh, was so uh, substantial? And uh, I'd like to ask about energy saving as well. I know the uh, department is uh, trying very hard to save energy, but you haven't uh, <coughs> Got uh, any uh, um, any uh, targets? For instance, you have uh, ins installed two thousand six hundred odd CDM. Do you have uh, the objective to replace uh, all our old lamps with this? And for LED, uh, you say that it's not cost effective because they are very expensive and that may not be offset by uh, 
the saving in uh, power consumption. So what are your plans? How many of uh, such uh, lamps do you intend to replace? Because there are over 200,000 uh, lamps in Hong Kong. So what is your objective or what is your plan? Thank you. I think Mr. Lee check in is correct. Although we have uh, put in place a number of energy saving measures, uh, in fact, uh, the number of lamps, no, no, no. Uh, the number of lamps have has increased in between 2011 and 2013. However, the power consumption is uh, more or less steady, so you can see the effect of energy saving measures. And the uh, Highways Department, the EPD, has got an agreement on energy saving. Mrs. Kwok, the Highways Department has agreed on uh, the following target with EPD. In between 2009 and 2014, that is within a five-year period, We like uh, to save about 500 units of power per year. So uh, we have various energy saving measures hoping to achieve this target. And we're able to save about 400 odd units of uh, power consumption per year. What about uh, the speed or the pace of replacement of your lamps? This is an ongoing exercise. We have um, replaced old lamps with more efficient and uh, high reflective light. Uh, the lamps we're using already very uh, high efficacy lights. The high pressure sodium lamps, when compared uh, with CDM and LED, uh, have um, a similar amount of energy saving features. All right, in 2014, you're going to, uh, from up to 2015 or 14, uh, your intention is to uh, reduce power consumption at about 500 units per year. What about beyond 5 million uh, units per year? What about um, uh, beyond 2014? Uh, we will have a new agreement with EPD later. Mr. Christopher Jong, regarding Potoy Island, Shouldn't you consider using renewable energy? Uh, in addition to solar energy, you can also consider using wind power. I've seen um, such a, a lighting on the mainland. There is a small uh, windmill uh, attached. It may look ugly, but you can beautify it. Because Po Toy Island is very windy throughout the year, and uh, it is worthwhile to uh, try using wind power and solar energy. There, they are two forms of renewable energy. Uh, I'd like to know uh, whether uh, you switch on or switch off um, street lighting manually or automatically because I've seen uh, road lighting already opened, uh, switched on at 4 p.m. and sometimes uh, they're not on even at 9 p.m. So can you tell me uh, how do you control the switching on and off of uh, road lighting and sort of standards you adopt? Thirdly, do you have any monitoring system? to um, automatically uh, check the status of road lighting do you, so that you can uh, have a health check of uh, your road lighting. Uh, some uh, lamps uh, may have gone dim, uh, some uh, might have um, uh, broken down. Do you have a monitoring system so that you can inform contractors to replace the lamps earlier to ensure reliable service? Thank you. Mrs. Kwok, uh, please uh, be uh, succinct. Thank you. Uh, switching on and off of road lighting. We have uh, 
photoelectric controller installed in roadside public lighting control cubicles. It can uh, feel the um, ambient brightness when it has dropped to uh, lower than 55 lux, then the road lighting will be switched on automatically. And if the ambient brightness has uh, risen to 83 lux, then the light would be switched off. What if the PEC has broken down? That means uh, the road lighting will be on even daytime. They do carry out inspections. Yes, we do patrol our uh, areas. You should have a monitoring system to monitor the performance of your lights. How frequent do you inspect a place? Once a week or once every two weeks? Now, if a road light, a street lamp is on during daytime, perhaps it is being repaired or maintained. Regarding automatic monitoring, can I defer to my colleague, Mr. Ng? Thank you. Regarding remote monitoring system, we carried out a trial. We had about 30,000 lamps under the system. However, we, the monitoring was not as effective as expected. The handling costs and the maintenance costs uh, will be too <coughs> high. So after careful consideration, We've decided not to extend that system to all road lighting. When was the trial done? Can you give me a report later? Perhaps uh, your technology was too backward. All right, we can give you a report afterwards. Uh, thank you. There are two points. I think uh, road lighting is still uh, too excessive, although you have lowered the uh, level of brightness. Because uh, for motorists, I think they mainly rely on uh, their own uh, car lights, um, car lamps, headlights. So it is required by legislation that all vehicles must have their own headlights. So can we further lower the low illumination of our uh, road lighting? because uh, cars do not rely on that for uh, illumination anyway. And for car parks or other things or at uh, tow plazas, uh, they are creating light pollution, such as the tow plaza of Eastern Harbour Crossing and Hong Kong Harbour Crossing. The lighting uh, far exceeds <coughs> what is necessary. I think for cars, it is important that they have sufficient illumination to lead them to the tow plaza. But should the whole plaza be that uh, highly illuminated. I think it is for the administration to review. Thirdly, in your PowerPoint, you, uh, uh, you, you, you find that the uh, lights along the, the tunnels, for example, and subways are, uh, are far too many. Uh, I think uh, many of the real users have wondered whether or not you need such a, uh, you know, uh, that, 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 uh, whether or not such lights would need to be so uh, bright, given that they are so, <coughs> so uh, you know, uh, uh, intensively installed. And actually, if you uh, uh, reduce uh, the, uh, the the number of fluorescent tubes by one, uh, it would not affect the level of luminosity, but then it can save energy. So could you consider whether or not uh, you should use two <coughs> fluorescent tubes per lamp? And uh, would you consider, you know, uh, uh, cutting down on the number of such tubes so that we can save energy? Uh, Under Secretary. Uh, thank you, Mr. Wu, for your suggestion. Uh, regarding the tow plaza of <coughs> at the Eastern Harbour crossing, uh, I think uh, <coughs> I think the, this issue was raised on other, on other occasions in in this council. We've actually deployed our, <coughs> our colleagues to take a look there. We found out that for two high mass 
lambs. They are rather close to a residential estate, and the residents there have certain views. And we've already relayed this to the uh, the transit department because they they would they they had departed lays with the uh, the the uh, East Harbour. Uh, Crossing uh, Cross Harbour Tunnel Company. Now, since it is found that in certain areas the lighting is too 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 bright, and whether or not the <coughs> uh, 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 there, there are far too many lamps uh, uh, into space, uh, the, uh, I think we actually install these public light systems according to the, the international standard in Europe and. And many Asian countries, uh, they all adopt the same standard. Regarding the <coughs> pavements and pedestrian footbridges and the level of lighting, there perhaps Mr. Ng could further elaborate. Thank you. Uh, perhaps I can uh, uh, comment about the point regarding <coughs> the uh, road lighting and the headlights of vehicles. Uh, the headlights of a vehicle uh, would not be able, would not cover a sufficient distance for the vehicle to be braked, uh, you know, safely. That's why we need public lighting, uh, and we we design, and therefore we design a public lighting lights, uh, the road lights, uh, uh, according to international standard. We need to ensure the that we have the required level of uh, luminosity. For uh, tunnels and pedestrian subways, if the lights there are too bright, we have in some cases found that when a tunnel is newly commissioned, uh, when the fluorescent tubes are, are brand new, it is true that sometimes, well, I think in, in a design we have uh, uh, already built in a, a, a you know maintenance factor, uh, and the lighting level be higher than what is required. Recently, we've introduced a, a new uh, measure, that is, we've installed dimmers, to uh, so that when a new lamp is being installed, we will dim it by twenty or thirty percent. Uh, and as a result, energy can be saved, while the pedestrians also will not have the feeling that it's too bright. And this is what we have been doing recently. Will you extend this uh, to all the pedestrian subways and footbridges? Mr. We are now focusing on the newly <coughs> completed uh, footbridges and tunnels. I'd like to thank Mr. Henkapiu for raising this point. I didn't realize that we're being so unfair to the residents uh, living in Poto Island and they, because they have to pay for their own uh, electricity. Of course, we can consider wind power, uh, you know, solar energy. Uh, they have a pier there. I think you can display photovoltaic panels there and even along the seaside because there's a lot of wind. Uh, and we can make use of the tie to generate uh, electricity. So there are many possibilities. I mean, it may, uh, the sums may not work out right. However, the government should take the lead to uh, to, to to you know you know use renewable energy in in places like this because it's very suitable. Uh, the, the director said that we don't, may not have sufficient sunlight. Then perhaps we can do it in conjunction with uh, uh, wind energy. Okay, that is a, a suggestion, Mr. Chair Wai Chin. Thank you. I think we have uh, uh, twenty more than twenty two thousand uh, 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 lamps and regarding the beautification of the environment, we are told the six thousand eight hundred lamp we have six six thousand eight hundred decorative lamps. Uh, along our roads, there are many public facilities. Many of them do not look very pretty, and they, and they're not, I'm very happy to see that we have these special decorative lights, which highlight the special, the unique features of a particular district or tourist uh, uh, destination. So, will you uh, uh, periodically or continuously review the situation? Uh, for example, uh, to ensure that these lights uh, can highlight the unique characteristics of a particular district. So, for the design of road lamps, I think 
the isomeral lines look the same me, uh, ever since I was a child. But now I begin to see different types and different styles of these for these uh, road lamps. We all agree that uh, if you beautify the environment, uh, the, 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 the environment will become more pleasant. Regarding the design of uh, uh, roadside lamps, uh, I, I had to, uh, 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 some experience uh, 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 when we uh, ex uh, helping install decorative lights along Hollywood Road. Well, you may add some features and then highlight the festive, uh, <clears throat> you know, atmosphere of a particular district, and you can also hang banners. And you may even plant some seasonal flowers along the road, so that the whole community uh, will look a lot more uh, pleasant, and in, at the same time, it doesn't cost a lot of money. So, would the bureau consider that? Perhaps the department could 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 uh, respond, Mrs. Kwok. Regarding the beautification of our street lamps, we will continue with the effort. For uh, decorative lights, they uh, are quite ex expensive compared with ordinary lamps. So we need to consider, uh, look into the, the special needs of a particular district. And while beautification projects are ongoing in a particular district, we will try our best to, to, to work with, uh, in tandem uh, with that uh, uh, project. We have certain districts, such as the uh, the, the bank along the Xingmen River in Sha Tin and in Chengguanou, when near the uh, stadium for the East Asian Games, at these unique locations and in tourist areas where uh, uh, tourists frequent, we would uh, f uh, start installing decorative lights in those areas first, and the effort will continue. Could you? I think the lamp, uh, you, of course, the decorative lights may be more expensive, but then you can, you know, uh, do something about the design of the lamp post and so on. Uh, that is, when you replace the lights, would you replace the entire lamp post so that uh, uh, it could, you know, uh, perform more functions? Chairman, if the roadside, if we need to hang flowers and banners. On the uh, lamp post, uh, this this is to you know cater to the needs of the district. For example, they may have certain events and festivals ongoing, and we will do so uh, upon the request. Mr. Gary Fenn, I'm sorry, I'm late. Uh, I certainly agree that in the Causeway Bay at Sha Tin and Shimun River and Chengguanou, it's good that we have such decorative lights because it's good for to enhance our cityscape and, and improve the quality of life. My question is about uh, has energy saving and how do we strike a balance between energy saving and, and economic, uh, cost effectiveness. Last year, I also already asked the highway department whether or not we can install use LED lamps to replace all the uh, roadside lamps. In paragraph 14, we understand that after change, switching over to uh, LED lamps, the energy that could be conserved is not significant and cannot offset the expensive cost of procuring the LED lamps. Is that a bit too short-sighted. For each LED lamp, uh, you can save uh, energy to the tune of two hundred dollars and lower the uh, consumption by two hundred volts. In paragraph six, uh, uh, one hundred thirty million uh, unit is uh, cost one hundred thirty million dollars. So one unit costs a dollar. In paragraph fifteen, the administration says that if we were to replace the uh, twenty thousand low voltage uh, roadside lamps to LED lights, we're able to save. Four hundred four million uh, units of electricity. The uh, CLP is only aiming to, uh, you know, <coughs> save, uh, uh, you know, uh, energy by uh, twelve what twelve hundred uh, uh, units. So, uh, calling, so we're talking about uh, three hundred and sixteen thousand tons of carbon dioxide emission could be reduced. So could the administration give us more accurate figures comparing the LED lights and also the energy efficiency of the LED lamps and the high pressure sodium lights so that on the one hand you achieve cost effectiveness at the same time saving energy and also cut down on carbon emission. Chairman, we've already said clearly that 
other than providing sufficient lighting and satisfy the the requirements of the standard. Energy conservation and reducing uh, 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 light pollution are major considerations when we select the lamps to be installed. And that, together with the EPD, we have uh, made a pledge that is within these five Yes, we hope to uh, uh, <clears throat> cut down energy consumption by five hundred five million units. As to for as to whether the LED lamps at the present moment, according to the views of our professional colleagues, it, it's it, it's uh, efficiency in terms of uh, uh, energy uh, efficiency is not cost effective enough. But we will not rule out the possibility that as technology develops or even new, uh, you know, uh, lamps may emerge and we will consider you adopting them. But it's just at this stage, we do not think that using LED lights is uh, cost effective enough. You asked what about the cost effectiveness of using LED lights at the moment. I can ask our colleagues uh, to, to further explain. On cost effectiveness, take LED lamps, uh, for example. We already say said in the paper that it's quite expensive. It's more, it, it's more than ten times more expensive, uh, and we're able to uh, save two million units of electricity per annum. So it's really very uh, not very cost effective at all. Another major consideration is that LED lamps at the moment. Uh, we do not have uh, a plentiful supply of certified LED lamps. There are not that much many in, in supply. So we closely monitor the market situation. And if we need to replace the lamps, we do not need to just replace the lamp, but the entire uh, you know, lamp itself, uh, and not just the bulb. Uh, uh, members have asked many. Questions and suggestions. Some suggested that we should make more use of renewable energies in the outlying islands and the remote area, rural areas. I think this is something that the government should uh, uh, experiment on, uh, irrespective of the cost effectiveness. I believe we 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 all want to have more opportunities to use renewable energy. Regarding roadside illumination. Indeed, in certain areas, the, the lighting level is too bright. So perhaps you can consider uh, that. You, I mean, indeed, in certain pedestrian uh, subways, uh, 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 that that is certainly true. So you should perhaps uh, adjust the standards. This is not just about light pollution, but also excessive consumption of power, which is a uh, concern of the community. Regarding. Uh, Lighting uh, of carriageway is already excellent. I dare not say that drivers only rely on their own headlights because uh, road safety is very important. It is insufficient to rely on uh, lighting from our own headlights only. And for uh, road bollards, well, traffic bollards, very often uh, they are. Uh, knocked down. They've been lock knocked down by uh, vehicles, and uh, the wear and tear rate is very high. Uh, the uh, shape and uh, for the shape and uh, for the sake of safety, I think you should have newly designed traffic bollards so that our safely uh, refuge islands can uh, be safer. So I think uh, this is something for you to consider. I think members have raised a very good suggestions for you, and I hope you can uh, review these issues in depth. Because of time constraints, I don't intend to allow uh, these a second round of questions, because the next item is going to require a lot of time. Uh, it is about the uh, private driving instructors' licenses. 
All right. We have a um, proposed motion from Mr. Wong Kwok Heng and Tan Ka Biu, and I read out a motion to urge the administration uh, to uh, study the application of renewable energy to public lighting and uh, to give an account to this council and uh, the public. Do we agree that we should uh, handle the motion now? Okay, yes. Those who are in support of the motion, hands up, please. Those who are against, hands up. Okay, thank you. I think the position of the panel is clear. We hope the administration to further uh, study um, the possibility of uh, using renewable energy for public lighting. Okay, thank you. The next item. Private driver instructors licenses or PDI licenses. Please invite the administration to join us. In addition to Mr. Yao Xing Mo, the under secretary, we have uh, Ms. Ivy Law, deputy secretary from the bureau, and Ms. Cinderella Law, Deputy Commissioner for Transport, Mr. Zhang Qian Pang, Assistant Commissioner, and uh, Mr. Patrick Wong, Chief Transport Officer. When you are ready, Mr. Yao. Yes, please start first. Thank you. Uh, while my colleagues are sitting down, I will give some introductory remarks. We would like to report to the panel the outcome of the consultation with the driving instructor trade regarding the review on the issuing mechanism of PDI licenses. Uh, due to the concerns expressed by some PDIs in September last year, the Transport Department uh, proposed nine options for the way forward to discuss with the trade. And we indicated very clearly back then that we adopt an open mind for all options proposed. However, to change the status quo, we must have a very clear and firm support from stakeholders first. Because to change the system, we have to amend the current legislation uh, and that is to be approved by the Council before we can have a new system. On the 19th of July 2013, at, the, at this panel, we briefed the panel uh, the, seven, the nine options, and we also uh, heard comments from 50 deputations, including groups and individuals. There were diverse views and no consensus was reached. And at the meeting, the administration undertook that the Transport Department would continue to collect views from the uh, trade. And we promised to report back to this panel early this year. Since the last meeting, the Transport Department has been uh, continuing its efforts to get the views from the stakeholders, including the PDI trade, the restricted driving instru in, in, uh, instructor trade, and a designated driving schools. After extensive consultation, there is still no consensus on whether and how the uh, how new PDI licenses should be issued. To play safe, the administration has decided that we should issue new PDI licenses as soon as possible using the existing mechanism. And that is uh, in response to demand for new PDIs from the market. We understand that some members uh, have uh, queries about our uh, driving our uh, driving uh, instruction uh, policy. Now, because our roads are congested and usually learner drivers drive slowly, so for the sake of traffic safety, uh, we believe that it is necessary to set up designated driving schools or DDS uh, to uh, reduce traffic congestion. 
and to ensure that we have sufficient PDIs coaching uh, on public roads. We have to consider the um, capacity of our roads and uh, also uh, traffic safety, and that's the reason why we have a two-pronged approach in respect of driver training. I am happy to um, answer questions from members on uh, the uh, easing mechanism of PDI licenses. Thank you. Seven members have raised their hands. Thank you, Bill Wong Go-Heng, Gary Fan Wu Chi-Wai, Leung Kuo-Hong, Albert Chen, Elizabeth Quat. Uh, four minutes each. Mr. Tan Kabyu. Thank you, Chairman. Well, uh, when there are fair increases, now if uh, trade unions do not agree, it is difficult for taxi owners to agree. And uh, for I think uh, when we last discussed this issue, there were 50 deputations, all with different views. Paragraph 11 of the paper. Now, if uh, the figures, the figure is correct, uh, you had 33,000 applications applying for 460 new PDI licenses. Of course, uh, these 33 odd applicants uh, had their own driving licenses, and they came from different sectors, and uh, they wanted to be PDIs. They didn't want to serve uh, DDS. So there is a great demand out there for new PDI licenses. To uh, maintain the status quo may sound uh, more acceptable to them. But I think uh, the administration has failed to address the concern of trade unions. If your proposal is to uh, retain the status quo, it is acceptable to me, but perhaps you should be more transparent. For instance, uh, we have the feeling that the government favors CDS is easier or faster uh, for uh, learner drivers to uh, obtain a license there. Uh, you have got uh, an annex to refute this, but we don't know whether this is true or not. And uh, some are saying that uh, learners uh, from DDS stand a higher chance of passing the test. If DDS has have benefited from uh, your policies, shouldn't you have some policies to help RDIs, for instance, should you at least uh, specify wages so that DDS cannot issue uh, RDI licenses themselves so as to raise the status of uh, RDIs? And uh, you should also ensure that people with driving licenses can still have the opportunity to become PDIs. So uh, there are only 460 new licenses against uh, 33,000 applications. The percentage is so low. So can you introduce measures to clear the backlog? All right, I will explain to you uh, the current situation and will ask the department to see uh, whether we can offer any assistance to employees of DDS. It's not that we feel that uh, the current status cannot be changed. No, this is not our attitude. In last July, we proposed nine options in this panel to show you that the transport department has really done a lot of work. And if deemed necessary, the current situation can be changed, and we offered options for people to choose from. I think you have to appreciate that there are different stakeholders and views within the trade. We want the trade to uh, come up with a mainstream consensus so that we have a basis for proposing changes to the legislation, or even uh, if the legislature is going to change the legislation, we have a firm and clear basis. However, we are a bit disappointed that after nine months, uh, trade stakeholders 
have maintained their respective views. They have not come up with a consensus uh, to serve as a reference for us to move forward. And there is also a great demand for new PDI licenses. So we have consulted the industry and Now, in 2012, uh, we decided that 270 licenses uh, should be issued. We believe that we should issue these new licenses first. However, we should allow the industry to uh, continue to try to uh, forge a consensus before we can amend the legislation. This is the current situation. Well, with a time limit for each member, I hope that members can be more concise in asking questions, and uh, officials should refrain from giving uh, lengthy answers. It is unnecessary to repeat information already in the paper. So please uh, be more focused in answering questions. I think the main question of Mr. Tenkabil is whether you will consider. Allowing RDIs to uh, possess uh, to be granted PDI licenses as well, so that they will not uh, be exploited by DDS, and also to ensure that there is a fair uh, employment situation. No, no, I think you have misunderstood my uh, question. I think there should be designated uh, wages uh, for DDS. No, no, I think it is not for the government to dictate wages or DDS pay to RDIs. Uh, I think uh, you have both exceeded your time limit. Okay, Mr. Wong Kwok Hing. Chairman. Well, on the 19th of July last year, 50 deputations attended our panel meeting to express their views and in the process 25 supported option one of the nine options proposed by the administration. So uh, the inclination was very clear. Seven supported option three, one supported option three or option six and one supported option six only. This is found in paragraph seven of the paper. Paragraph 7 is a summary of uh, the deliberations on that day. Given that LegCo <coughs> convened a public hearing and we also received views summarized in this paragraph, you shouldn't say that there is no mainstream views and that you don't have any basis for the way forward. Well, you do have a very clear <coughs> uh, basis. So. Oh, can you please uh, clarify the position of the government once more? Secondly, after July 19th last year, the administration said that after the meeting, you had continued to liaise with the different stakeholders and to collect their views, and I welcome that. And uh, what is the outcome of that consultation? Uh, please give us uh, a reply. As of now, the, the government still has to issue the new licenses. I understand that the government will continue to follow the existing uh, arrangements to issue new uh, 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 PDIs and while continuing to con uh, 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 collect views. I think it's a good approach because you're not closing all the doors. There's still room for negotiation. So I'd like the administration to tell us clearly whether the government is now, you know, totally at a loss, or, or, or rather, you already have, uh, you know, a basis uh, to proceed while you're not, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, ruling any options. Well, I think he's already also given the answers already, Chairman. Uh, what I said earlier on actually explained the government's position. That is, if there is need for any change, and since we need to amend the legislation. So we have to have a basis for government and for LegCo to amend the ordinance. And to make any change, uh, then we first of all, we need a consensus uh, uh, within the trade. Uh, since July last year, 
whether it was at the hearing on that day or there or after, uh, thereafter, we have not have any consensus on how we can amend the ordinance. Therefore, if we were to issue new licenses, we can only follow the method as prescribed in the existing ordinance. But I agree with Mr. Wong Kok Hing that we do allow room for change on condition that the tray should arrive at a consensus. Chairman, well, I still have less than a minute. The government should not give the impression that you don't know what to do at the moment and that whatever you're going to do, there is no basis. Actually, the basis is already there. And if the administration needs to amend the law, uh, you haven't worked out the direction yet, and therefore you want to proceed according to the existing arrangement while uh, continuing to collect views at the moment. So I think that should. Uh, th this is what the government should should, should 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 tell us. I think basically that's what he was saying, Mr. Gary Fan. Well, this is the second time that the transport housing panel has come and discussed with us on this topic. The first. During the first occasion, they say uh, there was no consensus, and therefore they proposed various options, and then they didn't do anything uh, following uh, after that. We had a consultation about the cross harbor tunnel as well. I'm worried that we've uh, spent a lot of time already. And we've consulted the different deputations, and all those efforts seem to have been wasted. Uh, actually, we should have made some adjustments to the system, amended uh, the, the the ordinance, so on. We, but we're not getting anywhere. The, the administration has not clearly considered the demand by the uh, the uh, the RDIs uh, 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 that the two track systems should be cancelled, and we are very disappointed. I remember very clearly that in the middle of last year, during the public hearing. The uh, driving instructor from the Hong Kong School of Motoring and the chairman of the trade union uh, was really agitated on occasion and, uh, and fainted. He said that the true track system means that the license is a slot license for a slave. The government was being accused of being colluding with the uh, with the private uh, businesses and uh, and uh, uh, allowing this unfair system to continue. The government is now saying that there's no consensus. There's no consensus. Therefore, the the existing mech licensing mechanism should continue. Now, my question is that. Uh, you've you put what six or nine options. It's not easy to to arrive at a mainstream uh, option. But can the fact that you are now staying put, and you're, while you are uh, issuing new licenses uh, according to the existing arrangement, uh, uh, and that, so I wonder whether you could uh, you know you know uh, sum up the nine options and then condense it into three, and then we can proceed with a second round of consultation, uh, so that eventually we can come up with a consensus that the government consider to be to be safe. Is that possible? Because the reality now is that someone with 20 years of uh, drive, uh, you know, experience uh, working at the uh, uh, DDS, they are earning thirteen thousand dollars a month, and they're earning sixty-seven percent less than the uh, private driving instructors, and it, this is apparently very unfair. Secretary, Chairman, the Transit Department have been working very hard. To put forward these options for the tray to discuss, and we believe that, that the, all these options are, are feasible. We just want to provide a platform so the different stakeholders in the tray can arrive at consensus. Only with such a consensus do we have the conditions or uh, the basis to amend the legislation. As we are not nine options are too many. That's not really true. If we look at the nine options carefully. You can sum them up into uh, into several categories. Some are only variants, uh, so the nine actually could be boiled down to six. And if you take away the option of maintaining the status quo, we end up with five options. Uh, some options will change the entire basis. So I think eventually we're left with only four options. Then it's not that complicated. What is most important is that if the tray considers. That we need to change the status quo. I hope they can really, uh, you know, uh, consider it from their majority interest, so that they can 
you know, you make a selection among the 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 the, the, uh, the effective options. Only then do we have the basis of foundation to to to, to change. Mr. Wu Chiwai, Chairman, I understand that if we were to amend the legislation within such a short time, because to deal with the backlogs accumulated since uh, 2012, we would not have enough time. Now, given the current uh, constraint, what can we do? Uh, many driving instructors have said that if we limit the DDIs, uh, uh, we do not allow the DDIs to 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 obtain new uh, LDI licenses. Uh, the situation will already uh, improve uh, significantly. Could there? That be an interim solution. That is, we don't need to amend the legislation, and through some administrative directives, we can we can achieve that. And if so, that can already. I think, I think you when you conducted the biannual review in 2014, this could be an interim uh, 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 solution to help the trade arrive at a consensus. We all agree that, and we hope that the driving instructors will. Will receive appropriate uh, an, uh, an appropriate uh, remuneration, and there shouldn't be a system uh, whereby the 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 salaries are so much less than those in the private market, and this is uh, and that the uh, private school motoring are subject to no constraint to recruit driving instructors to work for them. Deputy uh, Secretary, is Mr. Wu suggesting that we freeze the number of uh, LDI licenses? I think we need to consider this carefully. Uh, we need to consider the implica implications because there could be serious consequences. For example, it would affect the service level and operations of the uh, the. Uh, the uh, designated driving schools. It may affect the scale of the operations. They may need to adjust their fees, and may even leave the market altogether. And as a result, will not be able to look after, uh, you, know, you know, maintain the livelihood of their staff. Uh, this is we need may need to consider. They may also increase the fee they charge the trainees, and the, and the public will have less choice uh, because if you constrain. They not restrict the number of licenses. You will make the operations more difficult. And secondly, any attempt to freeze the number of the such licenses will result in these designated driving schools Well, it may result in legal complications, and they may uh, seek judicial review. Uh, uh, so we need to look into this with the uh, uh, Secretary of Justice uh, about this further. I don't quite understand, Chairman, whether restricting the number of uh, 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 licenses for driving instructors. I mean, can we deal with it in, uh, through uh, through the administrative uh, channel? If we have the school, schools of dry uh, motoring, they hire these LDIs, and they can apply to the TD to issue such LDI licenses. So when they apply to the TD, the TD will have to consider their circumstances and issue such licenses. If we now say that we should stop issuing such licenses, it may result in a legal challenge. In fact, over the last decade or so, uh, we've only uh, issued 31 new LDI licenses, so the number is not that many. Over the, for more than 10 years in the past, only 31 have been issued. Mr. Lang Hong, Chairman, I see the problem concerning the uh, DDS and the driving instructors. You uh, you have this method of drawing of lots, and 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 it, whether one is issued with a license uh, depends on his luck. Now, after we have had the uh, DDS, and the business of the DDS have been really you know prospering. 
so I have several questions to ask. When someone, you know, makes a living by, uh, as a driving instructor, it is his profession, and they have to go through your procedure to obtain that qualification, and that's the crucial point. I don't see why you are denying people to obtain such qualification. Uh, even if they have obtained a qualification, they could be eliminated in the market. But if you deny them to get a qualification, there is only one outcome. That is, whoever can monopolize the process, as the case of the uh, school of motoring. Uh, the instructors have come to complain to us so many times because the law allows the DDS to do, do what they're doing. Uh, for these big corporations, um, Mr. Jiang Chung Kiu, Jiang Chung Kiu uh, the richest man in the Sichuan province once, he came to Hong Kong to buy cross up tunnels and bridges. Within the public transport system, it's controlled by big uh, 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 corporations. Uh, how can you allow the uh, DDS to operate like a monopoly? So my point is very simple. Anyone who wants to make a living by, uh, as a driving instructor, I wish to obtain the qualification. The government has the duty to allow them to obtain that qualification. As, as to how he will use the qualification and how you can test the, 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 uh, the applicants for such licenses can be further discussed. You can't simply say the roads are congested and then you uh, deprive the, such people the opportunity, and even if you lose that, use that logic, why is it that the DDS have? Why can't we, you know, have more DDS instead of what? Uh, so I agree with Mr. Albert Chen's suggestion. Perhaps I. Uh, any response from you, uh, Under Secretary? Well, the the DD. S uh, uh, does not have a monopoly. Anyone who wishes to operate the DDS can approach the DD and apply, uh, subject to their satisfying certain conditions. It, so it's not a monopoly. So this is, you know, all part of the two-track system. Now, if the operator of the DDS. I mean, the, 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 the instructor's license is conditional on their working with the DDS. This used to be the practice of the bus company, and the bus company has scrapped it already. That is, the company help you obtain the license. If you're not hired by the company, you lose that license. Do you think that is reasonable? Under Secretary. The answer is very simple. Because of the two pronged approach, uh, instructors knew what they were for when they uh, joined the industry. RDIs, when they joined, DDS knew what uh, was their career path. So uh, because of the two-pronged approach, we have two different arrangements and systems. The administration may conduct a full review in the future to see whether such restrictions can be lifted so that there won't be two systems uh, for driving instructors. Can we have a single system where you, you should uh, consult the industry? Because indeed, there are different views within the industry. RDIs of uh, DDS would like to um, teach in the private market, and PDIs are uh, worried that if uh, this is allowed, RDS may compete with them. In the next round of review, I hope you can include this as well. Mr. Albert Chen, I think we are dealing with a very ridiculous historical issue because many years ago, through legislation, the government capped the number of uh, PDIs in Hong Kong. This doesn't happen in other professionals, not for doctors, or lawyers, or even plumbers. There is no legislation to 
control the number of practitioners in these industries because the government feared that if there were too many PDIs, there would uh, that that would be um, detrimental to traffic. But this is strange. If you don't have enough uh, courts, you should not control 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 the number of lawyers. You can adjust the number of court sessions. Now, for PDIs, you can also use traffic measures to say um, confine uh, learner drivers to uh, use the road to learn driving during specific times of the day. Well, 33,000 applicants, and they had to uh, draw lots to decide who could become PDIs. This is strange. The administration claims that because stakeholders have not come to a consensus, they will continue with the current mechanism. Well, why do we need you to be the undersecretary? Using this mentality, we can use other civil servants to deal with this issue. You are an accountable, politically accountable officer. Uh, for instance, in the last round, it was already proven that there was such a demand for PDIs in the market. So, it's just like the uh, regulation of the sale of first-hand properties. Uh, we argued over it for decades, and uh, Dominic Wong proposed uh, uh, legislation to control that, but it was uh, curtailed by privacy private property developers. And finally, Donald Trump was able to introduce it. Now, if you ask property developers whether they are for uh, the control of sale of first-hand properties, of course, they would say no. And now you ask PDIs, they are charging $220 per hour. So the fewer PDIs in the market, the higher they can charge. You ask CDS, of course, they would like to freeze the uh, ease of new licenses. They would like to uh, control the market. You ask stakeholders to decide this is ridiculous. Why don't you ask the public? Why don't you ask the 33,000 odd applicants in the last exercise? Well, it is stupid to ask Professor Anthony Jung to be the secretary because he knows nothing about transport. And uh, you are already the undersecretary for the second term, so you should do a good job. You, are, you, you dare not do anything, so why should you be an accountable officer? You are only giving out 270 auto licenses, whereas 33,000 people out there are wanting to become PDIs. I have... Uh, Propose a motion which I uh, believe is going to be defeated anyway. But my motion is very clear. I ask for liberalisation of the market, just like all other professions in Hong Kong. Let the public and the market decide how many PDI licenses should there be, not for government officials to decide. Under secretary. Well, stakeholders are people with vested interests. You should not allow. People with vested interest to control the interests of Hong Kong. Will you allow him to reply? But I think he will only talk nonsense. It's not that we have no intention to change the situation, and we're not saying that the current situation will go on forever. Last year, the Transport Department proposed a number of options. It was ready to change. If uh, there were a consensus within the industry, you should not refer to the industry because they have vested interests. It's just like the sale of first-hand properties. The reader was against any regulation of sale of first-hand properties. Your position is very clear. You're going to move a motion later. You will talk about the industry. This is nonsense. Ms. Elizabeth Quatt, thank you. In the interim, we have met uh, many deputations and uh, received views from the public. Well, as pointed out in the paper, the uh, options proposed by the administration uh, did not get any um, cons overall uh, unanimous support from the industry. And I believe that the current system is already outdated. Is uh, uh, a legacy of the past and is rather unreasonable. I think we should review the overall policy. For instance, many people asked why DDS could uh, issue their own 
RDI licenses and why can't RDIs uh, teach in the market and why is it that a vehicle or licensees of a particular group cannot uh, coach um, learner drivers uh, in another group. So there are a number of issues to be resolved. 30 odd thousand applicants on fighting for 200 odd license licenses. So is the current mechanism reasonable or not? It is hard for all these answers to be answered today. There is a need for the administration to study the uh, needs of the society and uh, also traffic safety and also the market situation. And that's why I am going to move a motion. Even though the administration has decided to go for option one, it is uh, just a, a temporary measure. It won't be able to uh, resolve all the issues involved. I hope that the government can address or resolve this problem uh, in phases. And the government should also conduct a full review of its policy on uh, driving driver training and should also review the number of uh, of uh, teachers in different groups of uh, the um, of vehicles, so as uh, to meet society needs. Thank you. Uh, we uh, review our, um, the need for issuing new licenses biannually uh, because there are demands out there. I think we should issue new licenses first, but that doesn't mean that we're not going to discuss with stakeholders and the council in relation to changes. However, will we adjust the number of licenses to be issued? I will ask uh, my colleague to uh, supplement. Ms. Law, thank you. In July 2013, when we met with the panel, uh, we uh, reported to members the outcome of our consultation. And we decided that 287 licenses had to be issued uh, to uh, uh, cover the wastage. And uh, we announced the finding of our review last year. If uh, there is a big time gap between uh, the uh, announcement of our findings and uh, the date when new issue licenses are issued, uh, this uh, may uh, there may be public disappointment and there can be legal implications. As regards the number of licenses to be issued and also uh, uh, the changes in uh, the approach, what well, we do not support them at this moment. Well, after discussion with many deputations, you should know that your policy is already dated and uh, no longer fit nowadays situations. So uh, as regards uh, how you can act in accordance with the legislation, it is your responsibility. We urge the administration to uh, conduct a full review so that our licensing system uh, can uh, be reasonable. The government should have reviewed the situation long, long ago. You threw out options to consult the trade, and now you decided to mark time. Of course, you will uh, claim that there must be a consensus within the industry. But our position is very clear. We should break this monopoly by capitalists. I think you are still defending the interests of DDS, which are big consortia. RDIs serving DDS have taught, might have taught for decades. They are skillful, they are full, fully qualified, and yet they cannot teach in the market, in the open market. This is totally unreasonable. What you do is just helping DDS, the large consortia, so that they can continue to suppress RDIs, which have no other way out. Because of the monopoly by DDS, RDS have to put up with exploitation by the employers. We should break this monopoly. Of course, uh, PDIs may say that this is not fair. 
because if LDRs are allowed to teach in the market, that means fewer people can jo can join the lot drawing exercise. No, I believe we should give priority to those already practicing. If you want to be fair to everyone, then I think you should support Mr. Albert Chan's proposal, and that is full liberalization of the market. But I'm not for this because, as a result, there won't be enough uh, jobs to feed all the PDIs. Their livelihood might be affected. So my proposal will break the monopoly of DTS, and I think indirectly PDIs will benefit because uh, once they don't enjoy that monopoly, uh, DTS must employ only PDI licensees, and as a result, current PDIs can work for DTS, and they can have more jobs, and subsequently there may be more PDI licenses issued. It's disappointing to hear from the Under Secretary that he's waiting for a consensus, which may never come. If you issue this batch of licenses now, you will have to wait until 2014 before you can have a consensus. Why don't you break the monopoly this time? Now you say that at this time you have to issue the licenses quickly, but the next round will come very soon. It is in 20. 14. So if you can stop the monopoly by the end of 2014, then at least uh, we can have some hope of seeing a fairer system. Mr. Yao, I think members, in even members in this panel, have different views as to how we should change the system. So if the administration is asked to propose legislative amendments to change the system, it is questionable as to whether they can be passed by this council. I think if we ask the industry to foster consens to forge a consensus, it will be conducive for them to secure support in this council. We want a consensus from the industry to serve as a reference for the council to consider. So you are lame duck. Last year, we did put forward options which we believed to be feasible. If the industry uh, could um, <coughs> uh, could uh, choose uh, some of them and uh, carry out the uh, changes gradually, we believe is feasible. However, after a public consultation, stakeholders still hold on to their respective views. So I don't believe we can put forward a proposal that can get any chance of support in this council. So I appeal to the <coughs> industry again: if they want changes, they should um, uh, they should uh, forge a consensus. Come at the keeping. We all very concerned about whether the existing system should continue. If I look at the background in pair two, the government has certain justifications for enacting the legislation. If we're going to scrap all the uh, arrangements, how would it impact on? I think the government will need to uh, do some homework about your uh, rationale at the time uh, as to why you allow the DDI should be set up. And in pair seven, uh, I think we, this has been referred to many times. When the 50 uh, uh, deputations came, other than the 16 who did not indicate any inclination, the only 34 which uh, uh, made a choice, and 7% uh, preferred uh, maintaining the status quo. I notice, of course, that many of those deputations are individuals. They are not driving instructors. They are saying that we shouldn't deprive the public's right to obtain licenses to practice as uh, driving instructors. Uh, you have 30 or 33,000 applications uh, applying for 400 odd uh, licenses. Many people want to apply for licenses just as a, <coughs> uh, you know, <coughs> as uh, something uh, that that. Uh, I mean, 
people who obtain a license may not practice as a driving instructors, as in the case of the heavy vehicle uh, uh, drivers. So I. Uh, just now, Ms. Quart, a uh, suggestion I think can be considered. In the absence of a consensus, I think we need to issue these new licenses. I've received uh, a letter from the Hong Kong and Hong Kong uh, uh, Driver Instructors Association uh, saying that uh, only 40 percent of the license holders are practicing as uh, driving instructors. Uh, this is reflected in the map in the market uh, because the hourly rate charged by the driving instructors have gone up. So I think the DD should collect such information uh, because when people apply for licenses, they will provide you with such information. If you have 1,000, uh, you know, PDIs, how many of uh, of them are actively practicing as driving instructors and how many are not, so that we can, you know, decide on how we can satisfy the market demand. Under secretary. To to answer Mr. Dick's question, the two-track system. We have a two-track system because, uh, and we allow for the uh, uh, existence of the DI is because we have a densely Hong Kong is densely populated where we have the roads are very congested and the roads are very congested. Some of the uh, driving learners, if they could practice learning uh, driving in, 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 in within the compound of the DDS, they can help reduce traffic congestion and reduce the number of complaints. For it can also safeguard safe the safety of the road users. And to answer Mr. Lee Chuk Ying's earlier question, once we liberalise the market, and looking at the figures since 2000, uh, in 2009, 30,000 people apply, and 70, 700 of which uh, were uh, holders of the LDI licences, which means that compared with the, in, with it, for the quota of 1,500, you have 700 people who are already qualified uh, to uh, uh, t give driving lessons on the road. Can our roads, uh, uh, have the, uh, do we have the capacity uh, to cope with that? And that is one major reason why we uh, maintain the two-track system. But it doesn't mean that while maintaining the double-track system, we're not saying that the 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 the, the, the uh, that, that we we're not saying that there's no room for change, but uh, the condition for change is that there must be a consensus uh, within the tray. Three members have put up their hands for the second round, and and we only have about ten minutes. So, and we have yet to deal with two motions. So I allow the all members to uh, questions to ask, ask raise a question and then a uh, uh, global response from the administration. One minute each. Thank you, you know, Lee Chia Yan and Elizabeth Kwok. I think the chairman misinterpreted my question earlier. I think the focus now is that if we are concerned about the welfare of the uh, uh, LDIs. Shouldn't we first of all freeze the number of RDI so the DDS will not be allowed to hire any number of such RDI uh, they like? We don't need to amend the legislation for that. We have 33,000 people wanting to apply for a license uh, to practice as a PDI. So, so, so if you're going to limit the number of our uh, new uh, PDI licenses, then uh, what about the remaining 30,000 people? Ms. Quart, I think the Bureau is now passing the buck onto the tray, and they're saying that you only come and approach us if you arrive at a consensus, otherwise things will not change. I think the government should have a role to play. You should study uh, uh, how this policy will, uh, will, will, can be conducive to the development of the the industry and help uh, relieve traffic congestion. You should come up with a you know option to convince the public rather than passing the buck on to the tray. So I think the government should come, have a plan to comprehensively review the system, uh, negotiate and talk to the trade, and win the support of the public so that we can review the legislation. Don't simply say come come to us once you have a consensus. The Under Secretary said that all 700 people will practice and fight for business with the uh, PDI. 
Uh, that may be true, but if that's the case, uh, if 700 uh, you know RDIs leave the DDS, then the DDS will have to hire new driving instructors. If all 500 leave the DDS, the DDS will have to have fill up those 500 vacancies, so there won't be any impact on the roads. And my earlier question is not been answered. That is, what's going to happen next? Do we need to wait for this incompetent administration? Uh, uh, you know, to do any something, and then uh, you keep on saying you, you have to wait for a consensus from the tray. So within the next six months, can you do something so that the next time you'll be more determined and you'll come up with uh, an option? Uh, we are very clear as far as we're concerned. We would support an option that would break up the monopoly uh, 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 in the hands of the consortia. The government certainly. The government's mentality is, protect, is to protect the interests of the business consortia and at the expense of public interest. They always talk about, they always maintain that the stakeholders should come to an agreement. Uh, uh, you know, it has not considered its responsibility to the public. And the rights of the public has been no. In all industries and so on, the government never, you know, talk like this. In the uh, recent Lantau, I, Lam Island disaster, the government had to review uh, you know the whole incident. Did the government, you know, you know, consult all the stakeholders? Uh, for has the government consulted reader where, when they want to do something about the primary property market? It should be the government to make the decision and not for the vested interest to make the decision. If the T, if the bureau considered the continue maintaining this mentality, they should all should be dismissed because you have not. Uh, mm, uh, on uh, public interest in your mind. Uh, uh, a quick response for you, if you may, uh, Secretary. Well, in my speeches today, I've always emphasized public interest. There are two aspects here. Uh, first of all, well, when we maintain it, we maintain a two-track system because we have to consider the safety of the road users, and that's the basis for the two-track system. And secondly, the licensing regime now allows anyone. Including the members of the public, or the uh, uh, the RDIs and other driving instructors, to uh, apply uh, and and obtain licenses through the drawing of lots. So we have catered for public interest, and we're not only considering the interests of the trade. Under the two-track system. And if you have uh, different views regarding the the the, <coughs> the, the, the quota, then uh, we will need uh, uh, consensus from the trade. As in many other public transport policies, we have to consider whether or not the trade has a consensus before we move forward. The premise must be that public interest should be protected. I hope members will not misunderstand uh, uh, what I've said. And secondly. Uh, Lee Ch Mr. Lee Chuk Yen suggests that well, I think we've said that the last review was conducted in 2012, uh, and we decided to uh, increase the number of uh, new licenses uh, to, uh, by 287. Uh, uh, 220 odd were for private vehicles. It's been almost two years. I think it's time for us to issue the new licenses going forward. If the trade can come to an agreement, then the administration and the department will assist uh, all the stakeholders to come up with a new uh, 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 consensus so that we can move forward and, and if we were to and uh, we have the basis to amend the legislation and then we can come up with new arrangements. Uh, we have now to deal with two uh, motions, although uh, there's some conflict between the two motions, but I think we can put both to the vote. The first motion is from Miss Elizabeth Quarter, in view of the fact that the uh, driving instructors have the divergent views regarding the issuance of new uh, PDI licenses, and they're not able to arrive at a consensus. We would the panel will urge the government to 
uh, deal with the issue of new licenses this year in a flexible manner and do it in stages. At the same time, the administration should review the policies regarding regarding driving instruction, including the definition number of uh, uh, driving instructor licenses and also the requirement regarding uh, RDIs in order to uh, cater to the needs of the community. All those in favor? Five. All those against? No objection. Abstention. Two. Three. I believe that <coughs> the majority are uh, in support of this motion. The motion is carried. The second motion is moved by Mr. Albert Chan, so, uh, seconded by Mr. Kok Hong. In view of the fact the government has frozen the number of uh, PDI licenses for a long time and deprived the members of the public f uh, f uh, the opportunity to to, uh, uh, to obtain the, the qualifications. We object to the government's uh, 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 continuing to uh, uh, we object to the government's uh, continuing to re freeze the number of PDI licenses. Urge the government to liber fully liberalise the, the the market for uh, uh, PDIs and so that those who want to become driving instructors can freely apply for the qualification and to protect uh, and to the public of a choice. The government should not mix up uh, the logic of road management and 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 and, and uh, policy regarding dri uh, driving instructors. Those in favour and those against, I believe this motion is not carried. So I will not sum up here because those two motions have already uh, are very clear. I hope the government will go back and conduct a comprehensive review and come back to us at the appropriate time uh, to report back to us. Uh, members, we've not finished yet. There's one more item we need to deal with. And uh, the, Mr. Gary Fan had raised this at the last meeting. That is, we want to have an overseas visit. I believe members all would all know that Mr. Mr. Gary Fenn suggested last time that we should uh, study the the public transport services in other countries and to learn from the experience. On the 21st of March this year, he also uh, provided some supplementary information. Our secretariat has uh, done some research for members' reference, and I don't want to have a debate on this today. I hope members can give me an indication that is whether or not we agree that we should uh, conduct such an overseas duty visit, and and and, and which should, what should be the destination, what is the the <coughs> the <coughs> subject of our study, the date and the duration of the visit, and whether or not we allow non those who are not members of this panel to, to join the, the visit. Mr. Fan, in both papers I've, set, I've, I've, I've stated my position very clear already. Uh, given the, uh, the uh, congested public transport system, system, we need to look at other people, uh, the, the public transport system, uh, electronic road pricing, and so on in other jurisdictions. If we pick a, a city in Singapore, a uh, place we can say in, in uh, we can consider Singapore, for example, uh, we're going to have the South Island uh, uh, line commission very soon, so it's a very good reference for us. I'm inclined to find a city in Asia because it's closer and on a four-day trip uh, we will be able to finish complete our study so it should be uh, uh, quite cost-effective and I hope members will support my proposal. Albert Chair, I'm interested uh, in, in this as well, uh, that is the monorail system. As we all know, uh, the uh, government is considering a monorail in uh, Kai Tak. Kowloon East. Well, uh, there is also a monorail in Malaysia. Yes, I think it will be better if we focus on a monorail because it will be useful for Hong Kong for reference. Uh, Mr. Gary Fan uh, proposed that we go to uh, Singapore uh, to uh, see um, 
the um, automated uh, system, railway system. And uh, Mr. Bertrand would like to see monorail. Both are related to our future development. So I will ask our secretariat to uh, drop a plan for us. And then we will see whether members agree to the plan or not. Our next meeting is the 11th of April. We still have time. There should be sufficient time for us to uh, make arrangements for the trip. I think uh, the duration of uh, the visit uh, should be around uh, four days, three nights, so it will not be too rushed. And I also don't want to take up too uh, much of members' time. So they won't be away from our uh, normal uh, meeting days. So it will be uh, sometime in July, August, or September. Well, we'll try to find a slot in these three months. So we invite the Secretariat to consider the proposals made by the two members. And I hope that at the next meeting, we can propose uh, an itinerary for members to comment on before we finalize. And if indeed we are going on the trip, we need the approval of the House Committee first. And we invite non panel members who are interested to join. Okay, any other questions? No? Then uh, it's decided. We will invite the Secretariat to do some research for us first. May I remind you once again that the date of next meeting is at 10.45 on the 11th of April. Thank you. Meeting adjourned.